question number four is 500 quid. What name is given to the illegal dumping of waste? The illegal dumping of waste. Fly tipping, ant tipping, bee tipping, bug tipping. That's A, Chris, fly tipping. It's the right answer, you got 500 pounds. <laughs> Right, usual warning, the last point at which you could go home with nothing at all. It's not happened on this series. It hasn't happened for, I think, something like three years, but it has happened. Take your time. You have all three lifelines. Question number five, you give me the right answer, we'll guarantee you going back with at least £1,000. Here it comes. Traditionally, bell-bottom trousers are most associated with which group of people? Mountaineers, pilots, sailors, firemen. That's sailors, Chris. Sure. Yeah. That's the right answer. You've got 1,000 pounds. What place? <laughs> Question number six is for 2,000 pounds. Bobby Crush is famous for playing which instrument? Guitar, piano, violin. Harp. It rings a bell, but um <clears throat> what does he do? I think I'm gonna need some help on this one. Okay. Um audience might know. Uh 50-50. We'll get rid of two. Uh phone of First lifeline you've needed, it's worth £2,000. Bobby Crush is famous for playing which instrument? Guitar, piano, violin, harp. Yeah, I'll, I'll ask, you, ask the audience, please, Chris. OK, right, audience. Uh, get you working nice and early in the show. On your keypads, please. This is the first question that um, Mike's needed a lifeline on. Have a look, give them the right answer. Bobby Crush is famous for playing which instrument? Now, A on your keypads audience will be guitar, B will be piano, C will be violin, D will be harp. All on your keypads, please. All vote now. Uh, 3% think he plays a violin, 2% think he plays a harp. 12% uh, guitar, 83%, big old majority say piano, but it's your call. I'll go with the audience, Chris, piano. You don't sound convinced. Well... <sighs> you don't like the look of them, really, do you? <laughs> <laughs> no, they're fine-looking people, Chris. <laughs> In the dark. <laughs> It's your call. 83% is high, but it's no, up to I you. mean, I mean, I've got to be happy with 83%. Um... You've got 1,000. No, I'll, go, I'll, go I'll go with the audience, Chris. Final answer. Final answer. It's the right answer. You've got £2,000. <laughs> well done, everybody. <laughs> uh, you have £2,000. You're kind of... Accident prone. <laughs> well, you're always locking your keys in your car, for example. Well, I've done that twice. So today, coming out to London, big show, getting ready, getting his bag sorted out overnight or whatever. You left your bag on the drive and drove off. <laughs> Only one of two bags, Chris. So you got one toothbrush and two socks and no pants. <laughs> it's a hideous fish, or something like that. All right, you have two thousand pounds. You have two lifelines left. Question number seven is for 4,000. The abbreviation CGI stands for Computer Generated Watts. Inscription, imagery, infinity, improvements. The abbreviation CGI stands for Computer Generated Watt. Inscription. Imagery, infinity, improvements. It's worth four thousand pounds. <laughs> C 
CGI. Have you ever heard of it? I think it's got to be either A or B, but... So which one? Infinity, in, well, it could be improvements, I suppose. Right? I think I'll have to go 50-50, Chris. OK, right, computer take away two random wrong answers. Leave Mike the right answer and the one remaining wrong answer. Now, you said it was A or B, A's gone. You've still got infinity there, or imagery. The only one that makes sense to me is imagery. So why? Well, it's infinity. Well, uh, because you can make images with computers, but you can't make infinity with even with computers. So I'm going to go for imagery, Chris. Even though you haven't really got a clue, have you? Well, I think that makes sense. No, I think I. Um, I wanted to lose either A or B, so that's worked for me, so I'll go with B imagery. Final answer. Final answer. It's the right answer. You've got £4,000. <laughs> I couldn't be bothered to spin it out any longer. You look so frightened. Are you all right? I'm fine, thanks, Chris. You still got a phone a friend. You are three away from thirty-two thousand pounds. You got your big lad Simon up there. Where, where's Judy? Uh, Judy's a nurse, of course. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Um, you've been married for thirty years. Well, twenty-nine. Oh, twenty-nine. It's close enough. Yeah. Okay. Um, you'd like to visit. Well, she says you'd like to visit places that are more picturesque than Essex. So you've got you know, quite a big choice. <laughs> Yeah. There, are, there are some very beautiful bits of this. There are, Chris, yeah. Like Hannifield and all around there, beautiful. Yeah. Um, but you're a keen football fan. Yep. And you like Brazil. Yes. Understandably, because they are That's right. probably the greatest team in the world. So you want to go to Brazil to watch your team? Well, I'd like, I'd like to see Brazil play in yeah. Brazil, in the, say, the Maracana Stadium, yeah. you know. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. OK. You have £4,000. You have one lifeline left. Question number eight is for 8000 what was the first name of the painter and sculptor Landseer? Albert, Edwin, Ian, Oswald. First name of the painter and sculptor Landseer. Albert, Edwin, Ian, Oswald. What are you thinking? I'm thinking Edwin. Why are you thinking Edwin? Well, the, I've heard the name lands here, but... And... That's the only one that sounds anywhere near right with it, but I'm not at all sure. So I think I'm going to have to phone a friend. Uh, OK. Who do you think would mm, know? That's a good question. Art. Unfortunately, none of my phone friends were particularly strong on art, so... Ah. So I'm just hoping for some divine inspiration, Chris. Okay. Really. I'm going to try Richard. OK, let's try Richard. What does he do? Um, it doesn't does, matter, it's not part of the quiz. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> he works for um, <laughs> local health authority, the um, accountant or something like that, I think. Okay. Yeah. We'll phone Richard, whatever he does for a living. We'll tell him this question. OK, it's worth, it's worth £8,000. Richard? Yes? Chris Tarrant, good evening. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Hi, Chris. Uh, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Just out of interest, what do you do for a living? I'm an accountant. All oh, right, OK. <laughs> Just a certain amount of confusion here in the studio. Right, well, you know what it means. 
I do. It means the mic's in the chair and he's doing okay. He's on £4,000. He's stuck on one particular question. Right. Now, there are still four possible answers. All right, mate. So yeah. one of them is worth eight grand. Three of them basically will cost him £3,000. Right. Next four year will be Mike's. You tell you the question. There are only 30 seconds to give you the four possible answers. All right, mate. Okay. Okay, fingers crossed. Mike, your time starts now. It's art, Richard. What right. was what was the first name of the painter and sculptor Landseer? I'm sorry, I don't know, Mike. Okay, is well, this ring a bell? Albert, Edwin, Ian, or Oswald? I couldn't. I couldn't give an no, answer, Mike. I'm no, sorry. Edwin, Edwin doesn't sound. Edwin Landseer. No. No. Okay, I could, Richard. I couldn't guess. I'm sorry, mate. No, don't worry, mate. All the best. Thanks, Richard. Cheers. Bye. I love that, all the best. <laughs> he knew nothing. <laughs> all the best. I'm going to go for Edwin, Chris. Edwin? Yeah. Have you ever heard of him? The, no uh, the name Landseer rings a faint bell. And... Edwin... Edwin Landseer. Edwin Landseer. Final answer. Final answer, Chris. Edwin. Yeah. You know you can't go back, don't you? Yeah. How confident do you feel at this moment? Not very. Give me a percentage of your confidence. Slightly more than 25%. 30%. Should really have been 100% because it is the right answer. <laughs> he did um, Monica the Glen, didn't he, and all those? Oh, did he? Edwin Lancia, you'll remember that the rest of your life. Yeah. Now, this is serious business now. You do have £8,000, you have no lifelines left. Uh, but you're only two away from 32,000. Have a look at question number nine. If you gave me a wrong answer at this point, Mike, you would lose seven of the 8,000 pounds you have at this moment. You're only guaranteed a grand. You could walk away with 8,000. Question number nine is worth 16,000 pounds. Take your time, have a look, tell me what you want to do. Which was the first venue to host two Winter Olympic Games? The first venue to host two Winter Olympic Games. Albertville, Oslo, St Moritz, Lake Placid. What are you thinking? I'm thinking not Lake Placid because probably wrong. I've got a feeling Lake Placid's not in Europe, and I would think it's more likely to be a European or Scandinavian country. Like Placid. Albertville. Never heard of. St Moritz. So that leaves St Moritz or Oslo. San Moritz. San Moritz? San Moritz. San Moritz. I'm wishing it was Summer Olympics, so I might have had a chance on that. It's worth £16,000, but if you give me a wrong answer, you lose seven. You've got eight grand at this moment, you can walk away. I'm going to go for a B Oslo, Chris. Where did that come from? Well, Oslo is Scandinavian. They're big into their Winter Olympics. They have lots of snow. And I think it's either got to be Oslo or St Moritz. And I just got a feeling for Oslo. Final answer. Yeah, final answer.